Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Potcotter, and you're listening to Call Talk for January 6, 2021. Today's topic is knowledge, man- knowledge management in the contact center. If you're listening live, we invite you to be part of the show and ask questions. Here's how you do it. You can email me at calltalk at benchmarkportal.com. I want to remind everyone that all of our shows are archived and available to listen to at benchmarkportal.com any time of the day. And now with that, I would like to introduce the host of the show, Bruce Belfiore. Thank you, Alan, and welcome back to Call Talk, everyone. Happy New Year. Now, as the complexity of customer interactions continues to increase, the ability of contact centers to manage knowledge becomes ever more important. Agents not only need accurate information, they need it quickly and in a format that is intuitive. An effective knowledge management system can reduce time to proficiency for new agents, lower handle times, improve first contact resolution, and drive customer satisfaction. Even agent satisfaction is impacted by how a center manages knowledge because agents' jobs become easier when information is readily accessible and intuitively organized. So this is a really important area for contact centers. And that's why we wanted to talk more about leveraging knowledge management in the contact center environment. And we brought in an expert on the topic for you, Burke Hughes, Senior Manager of Call Center Operations for GE Healthcare. Welcome to the show, Berg. Thanks for having me, Bruce. I'm excited to be here. This has been such a critical topic for us and, and happy to share what, uh, what we've done and what we've found with other folks. Well, thank you for doing it. Uh, just for our uh, listeners, Berg Hughes has over 30 years of contact center leadership experience. He designed and implemented the Quality Assurance Program for Staples North America uh, contact centers, went on to lead the first multi-channel co- contact center for Staples, He served as Vice President of Consumer Service at Teleflora, where he drove a 20% increase in average order value while establishing industry-leading customer service in a highly seasonal environment. Berg then became Vice President of Operations for Buy Seasons, where his teams regularly earned BizRate's Circle of Excellence Award, and he is currently in his fifth year as Senior Manager of Call Center Operations for GE Healthcare where his team recently achieved Center of Excellence recognition from Benchmark Portal. Berg has presented a number of industry conferences, including ICMI's Contact Center Conference, National Conference on Operations and Fulfillment, CRM Evolution, and KM World. So I note that his present employer, GE Healthcare, operates in a highly regulated, complex environment and they've used their knowledge management program to drive efficiency while improving customer satisfaction. So, Berg, a lot there. Wow. Why don't we start with some background on your current role at GE Healthcare Contact Center? Well, well, thanks for that great introduction, Bruce. I appreciate it. And at GE Healthcare, really what we're about is making different moments that matter because we are a provider of medical equipment, global leader in medical technology, got an install base of about uh, 4 million plus assets in 160 different countries. We actually invest a billion dollars a year on R&D on how to continue to improve medical devices. Um, And if you want to think about it from a scope perspective, one patient globally is imaged on a piece of GE healthcare equipment every three seconds. Um, Mm. In in the current environment in the pandemic, we really had to step things up, dramatically increasing ventilator production, And the contact center that I oversee supports our service uh, for over 25 different modalities of medical equipment, uh, uh, supporting America's largest hospital networks. Uh, It's a really complex environment. I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never seen anything uh, as complex as ours is. We've got FDA regulation. Um, Our hospital networks all have unique needs. We've got rules that change based upon the urgency of the situation, the time of day, whatever you can imagine. And, and we truly get life and death calls. Back when I worked for Teleflora, folks thought that it was life or death if their wife didn't get roses on their anniversary. But these are, these are true life and death calls you can get about everything from invasive cardiology to anesthesia. And at the end of the day, like I said, what we try to make our agents think of is we're improving lives in moments that matter because whenever you're working with our equipment, it's a moment that's critical where you're finding out if you or your loved one how they're going to be, how they're going to be moving forward, what their diagnosis and what their treatment plan is. So that's, that's kind of the environment, a little bit of background. 
That, that's fabulous. I mean, it just uh, indicates the complexity and the importance of what you guys do. And uh, one thing that I'll note, it, note for our listeners, too, is that there really is a, a long, great tradition of customer contact at GE. They made it a uh, sort of pivotal part of their overall corporate strategy to make sure that their customer service was really good. And that became actually uh, the topic of a number of ads, uh, TV ads, that were uh, shown during the uh, 80s, 90s, and et cetera. And, uh, and and into the, the present day. And the idea is that you're not just buying a product, you're tapping into a great organization that will be there to help you over the phone whenever you need it, 24-7, 365 days a year. And uh, that mission statement, Berg, uh, improving, improving lives in moments that matter is really, it's, it's a great mission statement. Well, how important is knowledge management in that environment? Give us a sense of, uh, you know, the, the importance. Yeah, it's it's really critical in our environment because when you think about it, the people that we're supporting are nurses, doctors, medical technologists who are on the front line supporting patients day in and day out. And if you go to a hospital even before the pandemic and see how stretched these folks are and how hectic their day can be, you know, we need to be there for them and make their lives easier, never making it harder. Um, like I said, we've got the potential for life and death situations on every call. And when you think about just the economics of what's at stake, uh, these are multi-million dollar relationships with some of the largest hospital chains in the world. Um, and like I said, they all have unique needs. And then we've got to make sure that what we do is accurate, both for the sake of our customer and because we're regulated by the Food and Drug Administration. Uh, error by us could literally shut down an emergency room or cost a patient their life. And if you think about it, even simple mistakes, like if we ask a, a nurse for a purchase order when their equipment was supposed to be covered and they're not supposed to have to give us a purchase order, that can literally turn into a C-level escalation because that nurse now is going to chase a purchase order. She's not getting her equipment fixed. She's losing time away from her patients. Eventually, she finds out she doesn't need it, calls back in, and you look at the amount of time that that equipment would have been down, the amount of time that nurse is away from her patients, Really, really a major problem. So for us, that knowledge is critical so that we can support those people who are really on the front line doing this work, helping patients every day. Well, that's I mean, there's so much at stake here, Berg, uh, and it's great the way you just explained it to us. Well, what initiated uh, your reexamining your, your knowledge management strategy? Um, you know, I think that a lot of people know there's a great tradition of internal audit at GE that goes way beyond accounting audits. I mean, they're real business audits. A friend of mine, in fact, uh, you know, worked for GE Audit, and they would. It was a real, a total business audit. And uh, so I imagine that that this kind of know-how in terms of just good management was brought to bear on your your knowledge management strategy. T tell us about that. Yeah, I think, I think what we found is that there's a difference between documentation and documentation that works when you're on the phone with a customer. GE's always been great at documenting. You know, we, like you said, we undergo business audits every year. We've got ISO certification. The issue really is how usable is that information when you're on a four-minute phone call. So when mm. I started with, uh, with GE Healthcare, one of the things that I was asked to do immediately was to lead an RFP to look at our outsource options and did we want to look for somebody different. And the idea of that wasn't just to find somebody cheaper to take the phone calls. It was really looking for somebody who could us differentiate our customer experience and take our customer service to the next level. And we knew that, that where it was so critical for us was being able to have the right information, have it quickly, getting answers to our customers so that we could always be right and get them taken care of as efficiently as possible. So a big part of our BPO selection process was looking at not just a BPO to help us answer calls and emails, but also somebody who could help us take to, to the next level. And so we were looking for somebody who could help us improve our training and especially our knowledge management. Uh, the goal for us was really to go from good to great. Like you said, GE has a reputation for service. We felt like we were in a good spot, but we wanted to be able to take that customer experience to the next level. Um, and, you know, for us, that was that was really the key that we were looking at. Hmm. Well, you know, I'd just like to underline for our listeners that, uh, you know, really, Berg wasn't just looking for something that worked, right, <laughs> which is unfortunately the situation that many of us are in when we're looking for, 
uh, either outsourcers or technology or whatever, uh, you were really looking for something transformative. You said, okay, we want to take our uh, service to a new level. And in my experience, when you do that, you always end up looking at knowledge and how it's shared in an organization and how it works. So when you started evaluating uh, knowledge management options, my next question is, what were the most important factors that you sort of put on paper, circulated, and uh, focused on? Yeah, I think I think that's the critical thing. Whenever you're looking at this, you need to know what's going to be the most important for your business and have that laid out ahead of time so you go into these vendors and, and you figure out who's going to be the right match for you. I think too often in contact centers, we wind up using the knowledge management technology that other parts of the business are using, and it's not right for us, and it doesn't work in our environment because the contact center environment is so different than many of the other things that are happening in any company, especially at GE. Um, so I think the first thing is we're 24-7, 365. We have to always be there for our customers, so we need a high-availability SaaS product that will put extra strain on our own IT team, something that was supported externally, but always going to be there when we needed it. And, and from that perspective, we also needed a company with a proven track record and something that would give our agents the ability to contribute to this because we wanted our agents to be able to move from consumers of knowledge to owners of knowledge. And we knew that was the only way we we're going to make this thing live and breathe. But at the same time, we needed something that had great controls in place from an administrative standpoint so that we could have those folks participate but at the same time, make sure that we're ultimately controlling the information that's out there and the way that it's organized. Um, at a minimum, you need a strong search capability. That's a fundamental just to get in the door. And intuitive for agents, easy for them to use, and for the administrators to use. The ability to organize that information so it's logical, can be accessed and organized and, and quickly accessible and give people the information that they need as fast as possible. At the end of the day, um, we want something that gives you the right answer and it gives it to you quickly. And one of the things that I discovered as we went down this path is there's really no consistent definition of what knowledge management is. Uh, we were at the KM World Conference. It's the largest knowledge management conference in the world uh, in 2019. And it was amazing to me that as we, we heard different presenters, I mean, KM was everything from uh, document management to dealing with big data to really what we were thinking about, which was really just the management of knowledge in that day-to-day -day operational field. So there's a lot of different definitions out there, and I think every person has to figure out what's for them. But those were the key factors we were looking at. Yeah, no, those, uh, you know, it's a great list of factors there, Berg, and you're right about, you know, getting the definition straight in your head. It's important to do that. Anytime that you run up against something and you're planning something, you say, I'm not sure I really understand it, that's the time to stop and really understand it so that you don't make, uh, you know, th think about requirements documents for uh, software, right? Uh, you have a checklist, you s create a spreadsheet template to rank things in a structured way, uh, those are all important things to do because they force you to uh, figure out what it is you're really trying to do and talk to your colleagues about it as well. Um, and, you know, the, the in involvement, too, of other people can go right down to the frontline uh, level. There was a center that uh, I visited, a um, very large uh, outfit that's in the photocopier business, and uh, one of the things that if a question came in, and they didn't have it in their knowledge management system, then the supervisors and the front line agent that had to deal with it would work together in order to create what they called a white paper, which became then part of the knowledge management system. And at that point, virtually everybody in the center had a vested interest in the knowledge management system because they had been a partial creator of that system. So, uh, you know, these are all important factors that you're mentioning here. You also mentioned the complexity of your specific environment. Um, you know, if it's about finding the right answer quickly, how do you do that in such a complicated context? You know, I think the challenge with most knowledge management systems that we've seen is that they're really not managing knowledge the way I would think of it the, with the contact center in mind. Um, what they tend to be is more of a document management system. So you can, it'll help you find the document that you need, but not necessarily the specific line within that document that applies to the situation you're in right at this moment. And that's really one of the biggest challenges I've seen. 
our goal was to try and meet the agents where they lived uh, by flowing out the interactions that they have and then building the knowledge into that workflow. So we'd first figure out what workflow and then layer the knowledge organized within that workflow format so that it's, it's the way that the agent thinks. It's logical to them. It's intuitive to them. So if you look at our job guides, you would see that they're actually really interactive. At every point where that workflow can fork and go in a different direction, the agent will select a radio button for their situation and continue down the path that applies to them. And it'll give them the specific knowledge or specific information that they need for that situation and that point in the workflow. The ability to organize that knowledge in that workflow, form, workflow format has been an absolute game changer for us, Bruce. Um, for example, we've got a group of agents in, in the Philippines who help support our business. And the CEO of GE Philippines went and sat down with those agents after they'd been there for about six, seven months, after, not long after we'd opened up. And one of the questions he asked them was, is this job easier or harder than other contact centers you've worked in? And to a person, every one of them said it was easier. Now, we've talked about our environment, how complex it is, the FDA regulation, all of the different things that can change. So the reality is this job was actually a lot harder than jobs done before. But to those agents, it seemed easier because by using our lighthouse knowledge management system that we had put in place, they were able to find the answers quickly, and there was never searching, hunting, or the most frustrating things for agents, not knowing the answer, not knowing how to answer a question for a customer. So, so being able to organize things in that format where we really met the agents where they lived and thought about things in a way that was logical to them was so critical to us. Wow, what a testimonial. Oh, that's fabulous. Uh, it sounds like you're a big proponent of organizing knowledge in this kind of a workflow format. Um, let me just ask you, is this something you had experience with before going to GE? You know, every every contact center is unique, right? We've all got our own challenges that we have to deal with. Uh, when I was VP of operations for five seasons before coming to GE, that was different. Uh, we were dealing with uh, costumes and birthday supplies and things like that, but it was a truly seasonal business uh, where we'd have to bring in hundreds of agents for Halloween. And initially everything was organized in a, in a share power, the SharePoint knowledge system. And again, it was more document management and the agents really struggled with it because it was hard for them to find the information that they needed at the point they needed it. The other thing that we found is most human beings, when they're presented with a problem, immediately jump to the solution. And call center agents are no different than that. When they hear the customer's problem, they jump to the solution. They don't think about, is this customer in Canada or not? Is the item over or under $50? So what we did is basically we built out a workflow answer guide for them that took them through all the questions they should be asking the customer and arrived at the one right answer they would have. Now, it wasn't as, as sophisticated as what we're using from Lighthouse now, um, but it got us through with those seasonal agents because you can imagine you start adding hundreds of seasonal agents in, all brand new, um, very, very difficult for them. So we needed a way to organize things that was simple for them to use. And then in applying that same concept as we moved into a more complicated environment uh, at GE, it's it's worked extremely well in this more complex environment as well. You know, uh, just talking about the uh, listening skills that are necessary, because as you said, uh, the human thing to do in many cases is to jump to the conclusion and to try to give advice uh, before you've listened enough to find out what actually is necessary. Um, you know, sometimes my wife says I do that as well. <laughs> so it is. It is a very human thing to do. Uh, but, yeah, and actually, it, it, as you go through the knowledge management system, things that you've been talking about so well, I think it's also very important to keep in mind the human aspect of it and how it actually works with the human mind and with our human resources. Uh, because if we can have both the knowledge management resources that you're talking about plus the listening skills that are necessary to optimize the processing of information coming from the customer so that you can then utilize those knowledge management system, uh, resources the best way, then you've got a great combination. And one of the things, uh, we recently released a, um, a short video on listening skills for agents 
and it's been you know going off the charts in terms of downloads or, or uh, listens because of the fact that this is so important. Um, well, let me ask you this: What kind of results have you seen at GE Healthcare after launching your knowledge management system? What's the proof in the pudding? We've been here? really, we've been really pleased with the results that we've seen. Um, in terms of our, our new hires coming online and learning, we've reduced the time to proficiency for them to hit quality and handle time metrics by 50%. Um, hmm. The most important number for us is our error rate because we talked about how important it was for us to be accurate and get things right the first time. Um, we reduced that from 1.6% down to 0.05%. So our errors at this point are almost non-existent as a result of being able to put the information in front of agents in a way that works for them on that four-minute phone call. Um, all of that helped us to earn KM World's Reality Award last year, um, which is probably the, the biggest prize out there in knowledge management. It's really meant to say that we've known for years that knowledge management has a ton of potential, but what companies are out there making that potential a reality. So we're really proud of that, and I think it really spoke to some of the results that we've seen. Um, since we developed this for the contact centers, we've expanded it to include a lot of other departments like our part sales department, uh, multi-vendor where we service equipment made from other manufacturers, and even our contracts department is looking at it now. Um, at the end of the day, though, maybe the most fundamental change is that the agents have become owners of that knowledge instead of consumers. They are giving us thousands of suggestions um, in our KMS annually on how to improve it. Could be simple things like, hey, you know, change the way we can search this, add more search terms. It could be how we change a workflow. It could be something that they heard from another department, like transferring to a technical support engineer who said, hey, this process has changed. And before, they would have heard that and just assumed it was right, and no one other agent would have known it. But with the changes we've made, now they simply, at the bottom of that knowledge article, they can click a button, send some feedback in, and that goes right to our administrator. And the next thing you know, we're checking it to see if something really has changed. So that has mm. been absolutely critical for us in changing the way the agents looked at the knowledge from just a document that they look at to something that's a real tool that's meant for them and they own it. Well, that is a series of results that are amazing, really, really uh, impressive. To reduce time to proficiency for new hires by 50%. I mean, I think that everybody listening to this can say, okay, if I could do that, what would be the dollar value of that? <laughs> it's pretty big. I'm sure you've probably figured it out, uh, Berg. Maybe you can't uh, share that with us, but uh, there is a huge dollar value that's there. Reducing error rate from 1.6% to 0.05%. Uh, there's going to be a dollar value to that as well, as well as obviously, um, you know, making sure that you're giving good information and that's important for uh, life and safety purposes. So that's that is uh, that is great, great uh, input, proof in the pudding there. And then the engagement part that you were talking about um, of having the agents become owners of the knowledge and becoming part of the knowledge management thing, because it's, it's a big deal to keep knowledge management systems going. And uh, if you have that kind of engagement, I'm sure it helps out, right? It's what really makes it live and breathe, and it's, it's, it really makes a, a massive difference for the agents because they're then involved in it, they're engaged in it all the time. You know, one of the interesting things for us is to get that, interaction with the agents we didn't have to do incentives we didn't have to do anything to drive interest um they look at this as their tool the same way our field engineers who are out um working on equipment every day have to calibrate their tools our agents have come to at the kms as their tool and they know it has to be properly calibrated for them to be able to, to do their jobs and so they've just taken that level of ownership and i think it goes kind of back to our culture of making a difference in moments that matter um, they mm -hmm. see this as their tool that allows them to be successful in that. A lot of pride and a lot of good uh, things that come out of that. Well, uh, Berg, recently G Healthcare earned Benchmark Portal's designation as a Certified Center of Excellence. Uh, congratulations on that, by the way. Did did your KMS play a role in that achievement? Do you feel? Yeah, thank you. We were, we were thrilled to to have that achievement and. Uh, the benchmark portal process was really an intensive review of our performance, both looking at the efficiency side and the quality side. 
Um, and the KMS cuts across every aspect of that. Um, the accuracy, make sure that we're giving the right information, make sure that the quality is there. Um, handle times and costs are certainly affected by the agent's ability to get that right information quickly. And ultimately, even agent satisfaction is is affected by it because there's nothing more frustrating as an agent than having customers on the phone getting frustrated with you and you don't know what it is you're supposed to do. So we feel like the KMS cut across every piece of that and was central to our being able to have that benchmark portal certification achievement. Okay. Well, well, that's great to hear. Well, given the complexity of your business also, was the knowledge management system implementation a really major undertaking? I can see where there could be a lot of, you know, uh, things that have to do with regulation and this and that and the other thing. So just, just tell us about that a little bit. It was, it was a very intensive process. It was about a three month process for us. Um, but my biggest piece of advice for anybody considering a KM implementation is to make sure you devote the time up front because this really is a, an ultimate garbage in, garbage out process. If you don't have the right information, don't have it organized right, you're going to spend the money and spend effort, and at the end of the day, you wind up standing right where you were at the beginning. Um, we started by taking a look at all our procedures, reviewing everything, simplifying as much as possible, consolidating procedures across different lines of business, where it made sense before we even began building out the KMS. So we really cleaned up all of our procedures that we had in place before. And then we had clean information, simplified information, better information to devote into that KMS. Um, and we devoted a lot of time to the format, which also meant including the agents who were going to be the end users on this because they know what's going to work best for them. Um, and that also helped them to be engaged on this. And I think it's one reason we get so much feedback because the tool was built for them, designed by them. And that made a big difference. Um, we had multiple iterations of our early job guides until we made sure we got it right. And we had that work that I talked about earlier really down so that it was, it was seamless. Um, we redesigned our training around the knowledge management system so that new agents gained familiarity with it in training. So really – a big part of what they're learning in training is how to use that KMS because if they use it right, all the answers and all the information they need is there. Um, the other thing that we did is, is we took and we built a, a knowledge manager, a person who's an expert on this and owns our knowledge in the KMS, and they're the administrator of it going forward. So that also has made things great because it's one of those things where if knowledge is everybody's job, at the end of the day, it's nobody's job. So having that expert in place has really helped as well. So it was it was a big right. undertaking, but worth the time. Yeah, yeah. So really, the uh, the process has to include a lot of people, but at the end of the day, there needs to be somebody who's actually accountable for it, and who makes the, has to pull everything together. And that person needs to be somebody who's really good at reaching out across uh, uh, silos and reaching across uh, various things, and has the obviously the backing of the senior people, so that he or she can uh, really do a good job on that. Um, well, this is great. Berg, any final advice you would have for those considering implementing or changing their knowledge management system? You know, I, I think the KMS uh, for needs for contact centers are different from other parts of the organization. So don't feel like you're forced into a tool that other parts of the organization are using. Find something that works right for the contact center that gets you the right answer, gets it quickly, and can be intuitively organized. Um, and then once you have that, invest the time in implementing up front and then integrate it into everything you do in your organization. For example, we house all of our newsletters, our quizzes, our training materials. All of that is in our knowledge management system. It's the center for everything that we do. Mm -hmm. That is great. That is great. Well, these are fabulous insights, and I noticed that Alan has a couple of questions for you. Uh, Alan? Yes, we have two here. Uh, one is from Jenny, and the first question is, is your knowledge management system integrated with your CRM system, or is it separate that agents must navigate to? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Jenny. Thanks for asking it. For us, it made more sense to have a standalone knowledge management system because our agents are navigating through multiple systems already due to some of the different lines of business that we have. So rather than integrating it into multiple systems, it made sense to have it standalone. I think the other thing that I like about it is by it being standalone, our operations team has control of it and can make some updates more quickly without being beholden 
to coordinating to any kind of an IT schedule. And we really prefer that flexibility. In other environments, it might make more sense to have it integrated, but for us, having it standalone works much better. Very good. Okay, I don't have anything to add to that, so why don't you go on to the next one, Alan, also because we're coming up against the uh, the end of our half hour here. So, yeah. Yes, the second one is from Carlos, and he's asking, if you had to do the implementation over again, is there anything that you would do differently? No, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can always find things we do differently. I'd love to have a project one of these days where I couldn't look back on it and say that, but I think with all of them you can. Um, I think for me the biggest thing is to always listen to the end users. Um, there was a point where I believe that putting in some screen capture videos would be the fastest way for agents to understand screen flows versus, you know, having screenshots and, and verbiage that tells you how to do something. Just having a, a quick 30-second you know, video of how you do this and how you navigate would work. And, and a lot of people told me up front that that was probably not the best way to go, that agents weren't going to like it. But I was so certain that it was going to be the right way to go. So we started off, we had some of those screen capture videos in there to see how they worked. And I can tell you, um, I was absolutely wrong. I should have listened to those end users at the beginning. We wound up going back and changing those and pulling the videos out. Um, so I think uh, sometimes we, you know, we can get caught up in what we think is the right thing. And at the end of the day, the end users, the agents who are going to use it, are going to give you the right direction. So uh, that's, that's probably the biggest learning uh, that I took away from this. Even with knowledge management, make sure that we're, we're focusing on what the end user wants and needs. Oh, absolutely. That, that's a great point. And uh, it takes a, a great manager and a big man to admit you, do, you were wrong. Um, and uh, I, I've had to do that a lot. <laughs> so, anyway. But uh, on the other hand, you know, you have sometimes you have these gut feels, and and you need to check them out. You need to see whether they work or not, because it could be that it's a, a breakthrough that other people just don't recognize at the at the time. So, well, this has been great, uh, Berg. Such great insights, a lot of uh, juicy material for our listeners here. We really appreciate that. Uh, is there any final thing that you'd like to add before we toss things back over to Alan to wrap up? Yeah, I think the only thing is just I appreciate the the time and the opportunity to talk about this today. It's been so critical to our business. And, you know, my advice for everybody, and, and I've been stuck in this before, where you have to use knowledge management that's designed for a different part of the company or a different business, make sure you find a tool that works for your contact center. That is the end of the day going to improve the lives of your agents and ultimately your customers downstream from them more than almost anything else you could do. Okay. You heard it here from Berg uh, Hughes. So thank you so much, Berg. Uh, this has been a great session. And with that, I will turn things over to Alan. Yes. Thanks again to you both for your insights on, and another great show. We hope you can join us next month for another great show on or look at our huge selections of archive shows on Hot Topics at BenchmarkPortal.com. Then click on Call Talk where you'll find over 11 seasons. From all of us at Benchmark Portal, keep those headsets steady and your fingers ready. Stay safe and stay healthy. This is Alan Pockhotter signing out.